Assalamu alaikum shri darshak mandali and welcome to our show uh, the usual politics and beyond I can amra jathariti jeta apnara janen je amra alap kore thaki bibhinno politics er upore ebong politician ra amader sathe jog den ebong bibhinno politics somondhe amra ei onusthane amra kotha boli ebong basically je apni kibhabe politics ke sundor korte paren ebong politician ra kibhabe apnar life ke sundor korte pare sheguli niye amra ekhane alap alochona kori ajke amader sathe jini achen তিনি হচ্ছেন অ্যান্ড্রু বফ আমাদের সের জন্য আমরা আজকের প্রোগ্রামটা আমরা মোটামুটি ইংলিশে করব এবং কিছু কিছু জায়গায় আমি চেষ্টা করব বাংলায় সারমর্ম করার জন্য টুডে উই হ্যাভ উইথ আস দি অ্যাসেম্বলি মেম্বার ফর সিটি অ্যান্ড ইস্ট মিস্টার অ্যান্ড্রু বফ হি হ্যাজ বিন এই কনজারভেটিভ campaigner member since he was a young lad and uh, part of his history is that uh, when he was um, he was one of the youngest uh, branch founder um, within the Tory system uh, back in the 70s he was um, a councillor in Hillingdon in in the in the 80s um, and while he was a councillor his mom was also a councillor so he comes from a a, a breed of politicians um, he was the leader of uh, Hillingdon council between 90 and 92 and uh, he he uh, has stood for the mayoral election um, in the london uh, wide and also uh, in hackney uh, without any further ado i'm going to introduce you to you introduce to you uh, mr andrew boff uh, who is with us today andrew thanks for coming to our show thank uh, you i really appreciate your time thank you <laughs> um as i've said you know you've been a tory all the way through yes and um one of your achievements was um, to create a, um, a, f a, a branch while you were skill still in yeah, school. Yeah, you, you do your research, don't you? <laughs> I mean, uh, that, I'm, I'm really quite... <laughs> I, 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 th I actually lied about my age in order to join the Conservatives when I was ah. 15 and set up a branch so of... So politicians lie. Oh, I'm afraid, well, afraid they <laughs> Quite do. Quite early on. That was the one and only time. <laughs> okay. The one and only time. Uh, in order to, because then you couldn't be, become a member unless you were 16. Sure. And uh, I remember setting up a conservative okay. branch as well. Sure. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I've, had, I've had a fairly long uh, history. And to be honest, I, w I was pushing leaflets in through doors when I was 12. So... Yeah, long, a, lo a long period. A a long, long period along with your mum, because she was also a, a Tory That's right, that, and I'm st astonished <laughs> that you managed to get that piece of information. And I still, I think, uh, am down as the only person who was a leader of a council while their mother was the mayor at the same time. <laughs> and uh, she used to have to shut me up in council meetings uh, and found it quite hard sometimes. Sure. Um, but um, yes, I think that's the only time that that's actually happened, to, certainly in London politics. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not member of City and East, though. I'm member for the whole of London, which covers oh, right, okay, City sorry, and East. Oh, right, OK, sorry. You cover, yeah, right, sorry, yes. yes. Uh, Andrew, before we go into um, our segment, which is a very short one for, for today because we had yeah. the Azan, um, what we do is we, we draw the um, uh, uh, prize for the winner who's, who's got the question right for the last um, quiz. The last quiz was... Um, where did the U.S. President Eisenhower have a residence in Scotland? And um, the uh, the answer is Coulson Castle. That's where really? he had a residence. Yes, and uh, we have some uh, winners here, so you need okay. to pick one out. So everybody else who entered, I'm, they're now not going to vote for me because <laughs> I didn't pull their name out. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but um, there we go. Just read it out. Asma Begum. Okay. In Kent. Okay. So Asma Begum is the winner from Kent yeah. and we will duly uh, send her a prize to her. Thank you. And for the viewers at home, today's quiz is what does Donald Trump have with Scotland? Um, sorry, in Scotland. Is it an oil refinery, a bread factory or a land for golf course? Uh, so the possible answers and the question will come on under the screen and the place you're going to uh, send your answers to is at pnb at channeleyeurope.tv. Um, Andrew, on this uh, segment what we do is we ask the politicians about their political highlight. Mm. So what would be your political highlight or something that you have captured your mind mm. that you would like to share with us and the viewers? It could be anything 
It's very difficult sometimes to pick one thing because our job is to, uh, I mean, as a, a, a uh, member of the London Assembly, my job is to ensure that London government is working. Uh, but I think since being elected, the thing that strikes me that how London has changed since 2008, when I was first elected as a member of the London Assembly, is the way in which we've effectively got rid of uh, the BNP. Oh, and that's the far fantastic! Right. Yes, uh, that's I one mean, one thing. It's 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 a major achievement. Um, that doesn't mean that those sentiments yeah. that the BNP represented have gone. Yeah, they may very well manifest themselves in a different way. But you have managed to extinguish some of it. That's right, and and we had a you know for four years up until the elections um, in 2012. Uh, we did have a member of the BNP as a, a member of the London yes. Assembly, Richard yeah. Barnbrook. Yeah. Um, and uh, luckily he, he's, well, I'm, I'm pleased he's to gone. say that he's now gone. We must always be vigilant, however, because those same sentiments will yeah. change, you know, because it didn't used to be the BNP, it yeah. used to be the National Front. If you yeah. remember, I'm, I can still remember when that first... National Front councillor was elected yep. in Tower Hamlets. Yeah, yep. uh, Baron Bacon. That's it. Baron Bacon. Yeah. Uh, back in the nineties. Uh, in the nineties, yep. and th that was done because you of probably been the uh, leader at that time. I was in, leader of Hillingdon, Hillingdon Council Hillingdon at, at that, that time. time. Yeah. yeah. And and it was a, an object lesson in how not to deal with uh, communities. How do you? Let me put a different question. I mean. It's good to see that you've got rid of uh, Barnwell, well, not yourself, but, mm, yeah. you know. We, but, we, all, but, we all played but, a part, yeah. didn't we? But yeah. since you've come on uh, as an assembly member, these things has, has uh, kind of eliminated with your mm. group. And yeah. I, I, I also know that you guys have tremendously annoyed Barnbrook when, when he was around yeah. during questioning, putting people right beside him. Um, that yeah. he doesn't like and yeah. things like that. Try yeah. to so effectively, you kind of uh, put him in a corner. But the other question that I have for you is that how would you resonate that with uh, the new new politicians on the block like UKIP? Yes, you see, and I think that's where we've got to be cautious because the one good thing about the BNP is that they wore their opinions and prejudices in public. Right in front, you could yeah. see right on their face. I mean, yeah. they used to. You, I, I'm pleased to say that he put in a complaint about me, Richard Barnbrook put in a complaint about me because I used to <laughs> refer to him as a Nazi. You know, as far as I'm concerned, that's what he was. Yeah. Um, and uh, the dictionary definition yeah. of a Nazi, that's what the BMP were. When we look at organisations like UKIP, UKIP is, is another political party that basically tries to divide people rather than yeah. unite people. They're more in a suited booted, but their That's right, fundamental agenda is the same. They may not, they may not have an issue about the t skin tone or the yeah. colour of people's skin, yeah. but they do have an issue about people's faith. Yeah. And I think we need to be cautious that it might move from the um, discrimination about ethnicity to discrimination about people's faith. And we've seen um, how there's a general rise in Islamophobia yeah. um, in, the, uh, in the UK. The situation in the Middle East doesn't help, yeah. but we've, we all need to be alert to the fact that there will be Islamophobic and anti-Semitic attacks as a result of uh, what's happening in the, um, uh, in the Middle East. Now, there are, there are parties that take uh, take advantage of the hostilities mm. uh, to certain mm. uh, certain communities and UKIP is one of those parties that believes Not that there are, there are in the communities there are there are us and them yeah. as far as I'm concerned yeah. as conservative politicians there are no them. I mean they, they, they also have uh, a very strews views on women like they're saying they're good enough for cleaning and cooking and absolutely and then about gays that the world yeah. is turning upside down oh, because we have gays you know you see the thing just the, the thing about them is is that i mean even the, no, you you won't find that in any of their policies no. but no. you can <laughs> yeah. see yeah. you can see that amongst their members and the people who represent them yeah. there's some deeply held prejudices yeah and unsettling prejudices which come to the fore and these are people who have now been elected to places like the sure. European Parliament, yeah. have been elected to some councils. Yeah. And whilst they don't wear that prejudice on their sleeves and they don't wear it on a badge, actually it gets revealed every time they yeah. open their mouths. Yeah. 
On the, and, and the, uh, the other side of it is that I know Europe is a big issue at the moment and it will be one of the elections highlight uh, matter. Um, a lot of the um, Tory MPs are, you know, lining up to go to UKIP on the basis not that they like UKIP or their policies, but on the basis that they are they don't like Europe. Now we, I, for my limited knowledge, I know for sure that it's not an easy task just to get out of EU mm -hmm. and to reform it, but to make a stand and just moving into a party as such. Uh, do you think that it's just giving fuel to, to people like Nigel? Well, I, I think it is, and, and I think it's a great... Uh, people make, want to make a statement. They have a very strongly held views about Europe, which actually, actually the majority of people don't have. They don't ha think it's the most important mm. thing. People tend to think the housing, the NHS, transport, education, much more important issues of course, than yeah. the membership of the EU. Yeah, yes. and, and in that, I am actually with them. I, I do think that we should pull out of pull Europe out, yeah. unless, it, unless it reforms itself yeah. massively. However, what they're doing by uh, joining UKIP or um, you know, uh, making these statements is they're mac actually making it harder to come yeah. out of Europe, because the part, the, the, the most Eurosceptic of the old traditional parties is the Conservative Party. Yeah, yeah. We're the ones who are going to be able to promise a referendum and make a choice. And I, may I say, I think that there's a huge, parties have been, uh, perhaps I, I haven't got on further in politics because yeah. I sometimes criticise my own party. And, and one of the things I do think is that we should have offered this referendum about 10 years, if sure. not 20 years ago. If you want to wrap up, we're going to go on to the break. Mm -hmm. um, I know David, David Cameron has um, given the option of uh, bringing a referendum in 2017, and we'll yes. talk about that if we get a chance later on. Mm -hmm. We're going to go on a short break, and we'll come back and discuss other issues with you. Great, thanks. Shri Darshak Mandali, I'm going to go to a short break, and I'm going Thank you. 